Hey everybody, Lord for Life, Chaotic here, bringing you guys a brand new video. I know it's been a while, to, <laughs> these past few months have been quite hectic. Uh, the school semester, as it was winding down with the oh-so-wonderful finals, I had to basically just abandon the internet for a while and study like hell and pass my finals, which I did. I ended up getting pretty good grades all around, and so yeah, I'm back. <laughs> uh, so today, I wanted to do something that I haven't done in a long while, and that's an update on my chaotic collection. I know you guys uh, really liked the first one way back when I uh, was still uploading chaotic videos on my old channel, I mean on my main channel. Uh, so I, I want to do an update one, especially since uh, I haven't done one for this channel yet and I never got around to uploading the old one on here. <laughs> so uh, I don't know why my camera is so out of focus. Come on, stop that. Eh, okay, there we go. So. Here we go with my collection. I got all my hollows in here. I put every single one uh, in, in this binder and I will say this now, some of it is for sale and stuff and I will point that out as we go along. Uh, but however, for the most part, a lot of it I am keeping a hold of because as you guys know, this game is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, so first and foremost, we got up here the four generals. Uh, it took me a while to get all four because they almost never seem to pop up on eBay and it drives me nuts. But however, I did manage to get all four. Uh, I think the generals are a really cool idea and concept, but the fact that only one, arguably two, is any good, <laughs> is it just drives me nuts. And of course the good one is Tang of Toborn. Uh, you can kind of say that there's an argument to be made for Bareth being good as well. And I could see Grantake being kind of okay. But uh, Gorum is just garbage. It, it's it's a sad thing about how garbage this guard is. Oh my god. If, it, if his effects lingered while he was in the graveyard or something, or sorry, uh, discard pile, I, I, I'm sorry if I use Yu-Gi-Oh terms. It's, in, it's ingrained in my memory. Uh, but uh, if his effects lingered while in the discard pile, perfect. But it doesn't, so no. <laughs> uh, then we got Epaluo. Uh, I recently got this, uh, actually I don't think it was very recent. I got this promo, I believe it was from uh, Norval Steven. I can't remember. It's driving me nuts. I believe it was from him. But yeah. Iparu Jungle was actually my first ever Ultra I pulled. Uh, I remember opening up Silent Sands, desperately trying to pull a Blastitan, because I loved Mepedians uh, as a kid. They were my favorite tribe before Marillions were released, and I really, really wanted that Blastitan. And I could not pull him for the life of me. Uh, and my first Ultra was Iparu Jungle. My first Ultra Rare Creature after that, and actually it was my second Ultra after that, uh, was Heptad. And then I pulled uh, Kaor as a kid as well. I actually still have that Kaor, which I'm really happy about. Um, yeah, I never had particularly great pulls as a kid for Chaotic, or Yu-Gi-Oh for that matter. Heck, I still don't have very good pulls for Yu-Gi-Oh. I can't say the same about Chaotic anymore, though. <laughs> then we got, a, we got a couple cards here. These are French First Ed Unfinished Cards. Let me go ahead and zoom in. These are from the Canadian version of Chaotic. Uh, I don't know too much about the French cards. These are the only French cards I've seen, uh, other than a French uh, unfinished Max Sword that was also like uh, that. Like I bought with these two, uh, but I believe I sold that off a while back because uh, somebody was really wanting it, and I'm like, ah, sure, why not? Uh, I kind of hated breaking up the set, but oh well. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind too much. They are first edition too, since they do since they are pre errata which is pretty cool as well. So, it's just really interesting seeing these unfinished cards in another language. Uh, really fun. Then over here, I got one of my Kiara Fierces, because I do indeed have two. I just didn't feel like stacking him on the other one, so I stuck him up here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and zoom out. And then over here, we got some promos that I have. Most of the promos I have are unfinished. I think I do have a finished never. Yeah, I do. Uh, Nebra's underneath there. Uh, but uh, I do really like the unfinished ones. They're really cool. Oh, wait, it just dawned on me that got up in aimed to our finished. I could have sworn they were unfinished. <laughs> it goes to how scatterbrained I am sometimes. But yeah, uh, Visqua and Nebra's, I do own unfinished ones of those as well. Just kind of cool to have. Uh, Visqua, I really like his artwork, but he sucks, like, in all honesty. Like, oh, do five damage. Cool. He only has one major counter. 
Cataclysm is, uh, sorry, Cataclysm, this card is garbage. It, it's basically a miniature, uh, like, Almageddon, but it costs uh, way too much <laughs> for its build points, and there's just better cards out there. Uh, Bidua is pretty cool. Um, you got to see here, yeah. Something I really liked about Chaotic, for the most part, is that their promos weren't particularly broken like I mean look at these these are all promos and they're just kind of okay uh, and from what I've seen most other promos are also not particularly broken but then you get stuff like the draw skin and Bodo's elemental converter and some of the other crazy promos especially like the uh, uh, the uh, dev only ones like oh my god have you guys ever seen that one Momart card that's like insane <laughs> Uh, up here we got some more promos. Um, this is basically just all promos, really. Uh, good old Yakis, as much as I hate him, he's still a pretty cool card. Uh, we got Ursanog, who I think I've actually used in a deck or two. He's really interesting. Uh, okay stats all around, some decent health. But he's got Air 5, and hey, if you're going with an air-focused uh, Underworld deck, he's not terrible. Uh, Fear Valley is pretty cool. Uh, as the all art, I don't think I even own a real, like a standard art fear value now that I think about it, but I'm not sure about that. Over here, we got the beginning of where I actually like organize crap a bit more effectively. This is uh, my the first of the overworld pages. Uh, I got Karaba, I, I have way too many of this thing because he was a tin promo. Uh, Frafto, the hero, really good card, uh, only really particularly great in 1v1 games, but oh well. Uh, Vidav, pretty cool card as well. I uh, got my Ting of Toborn in training. I got actually two of him. Got one Gronmore. I would really like to be able to get a hold of a uh, hold of a second one, but oh well. Uh, Realm is also pretty cool. And then of course the top rows where where things get really interesting. Got my Max Sword Protector of Param. I'm still happy I pulled him. <laughs> He's I, I I have not. I don't think I've ever owned one, and it's just really cool having one. I got my uh, Hawaii. Uh, Heptad, this is my like second most valuable card <laughs> uh, in in my collection. Uh, if we're talking about like personal, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, even like in terms of like my personal interest, it's still the second most valuable card I own. And then we got good old interests because who doesn't love interests? And you know, interest nature force is pretty good as well. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. So. I uh, got Hewn Palatannon, uh, apparently she's like banned on the ban list or something. Uh, I can see why she's busted. Uh, <laughs> uh, good old original interests. I really wish that interests and Tang of Toborn were better because, oh my god, the originals, I, I, they're iconic and everything, but eh, they're garbage. Um, Avena is pretty cool. I got uh, Llama. I, th I think she's my only one, and she's also like hard cut, like somebody like actually probably cut her out of a sheet. Uh, Nadrin Younger, I've pulled so many of him, and God, is it just me or like all but two of Nadrin's versions are like garbage? The the two that are okay, you know, you, well you got uh, Nadrin Fluid Morphous Foe, that one's broken. Well, I wouldn't say broken, but it's really really good. And then Nadrin High Muge is this. I can't remember exactly what he does, but I don't remember him being like a particularly amazing. But younger, oh god, I don't like younger. <laughs> uh, Okolex is also pretty cool. Down here is where we get to the underworld stuff. Got my original Kaor that I've had since I was a kid. Still happy I still have this guy. He's just so cool. I know he's not at max HP, but he might as well be. And you know, you got the three energy and well, not the three energy, the three major counters and everything. Just overall, really awesome. And we got my other uh, key or diffuse. By the way, I am willing to sell one of them. I'm probably if I do sell either, I'm probably going to go with the one that's uh, got lower uh, stats, well, the lower energy. I got my Takinam, uh, the Shadow Knight promo. I do want to try and get my hands on a regular art of her, and I yes, I do know I did pull one in the past, but I sold it because somebody offered a pretty good amount for it. So I, I do want to try and get my hands on a regular art uh, Takinam eventually as well. But I do really love her alt art as well. It's just so cool, and she's such a great card in general too. Over here we got Hammer Doom Chant Caller. I've always loved saying his name. It's just so cool. Like Chaotic has some of the best names for like monsters in like ever. You got Hammer Doom Chant Caller, Odoo Bathax, uh, you know, uh, Sirenox. All these just crazy cool names. It's I love it. 
Uh, speaking of, I got Cyronox here. I didn't know where to put him. He's a fire and stone promo. Uh, and he's a really good one too. Basically, while all your creatures have fire, he does an additional five damage. Really great for fire focused uh, decks and stuff. Uh, Borf Majar, I I've always liked this card in concept, but I'm not a big fan of the actual card itself. Uh, got good old Magmon, uh, the Retaliator. I have way too many of him and Realm. Uh, this Realm, I pulled way too many of them. <coughs> actually, I have, excuse me. Actually, I have like a tin full of them because I pulled them so much. Uh, I got a Tormigar. That is what his name is, right? Term Termigar. Uh, he's, I haven't, I don't really know. I haven't read him. <laughs> I like his design though. He's a buggy kind of looking thing. Ochadur is pretty cool. I've always really liked this idea of this card because he actually makes old Takinon playable because uh, he gives her what she should have had since the beginning. I hate it how old Takinon, like the original, does not have fire. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Down here we got Omar. Uh, did Omar ever get a retrain? I don't think he did. <laughs> uh, Fell for, uh, who of course is really a Marillion, but they were propping him up as a underworlder to you know set up the twist and everything. Uh, Nophilax Tainted is a really obnoxious card. I love it. Over here, we got the waifus up here: Takinam, Skiffia, and Nevena. <laughs> I can't really go wrong with any of them. Although I really, again. You know, talking on the original would have been a perfectly fine card for Donna Param format if she had fire. It drives me nuts she doesn't. Uh, Skiffia, I really want to like more. It, it, heck, the creatures uh, that follow uh, freaking Lord Von Blue, I've always really wanted to uh, like more, but uh, they they just aren't good enough, uh, and it drives me nuts. I got one Nevena. Nevena's pretty cool as well. I can't decide if I like her or Avena more. It's really tough. <laughs> Down here we got the original Bear of Beyond. Still a really good card overall. Like if you want to like have him for a fire deck, I don't think you. I don't think it's a bad idea. He's a good card overall. The recklessness is a bit annoying, but the fire five and the intimidate power is both really nice. He's got good stats all around and 65 energies is crazy. Uh, I got an Ilks. I think I got a miscut one underneath him somewhere. Uh, I got Uxum. Uxum's a really interesting uh, Brain Wars uh, minion to me. Uh, the fact that he basically becomes super buff and everything, uh, with depending on what he's got equipped and how everything are going, really interesting. Got an Agitos down here. Uh, Agitos is pretty cool. I think it's funny that it took them forever to print him. Uh, unless, did he get printed before? I don't know. <coughs> then we got uh, Alexia. Uh, guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest fan of the Danians, they're my least favorite tribe, but uh, I do really like Alexia's design, she looks really cool, and her card is also pretty good as well. Got a Necrabe, I've been told he's a garbage ultra, I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm gonna just roll with it. Uh, over here, I got a Kapilar, uh, I, got another, I got another Fire and Stone card, Riggin. Uh, Funra, I've got way too many of this guy. Got Hammerdoom, Chant Caller, Assistimulated, Colmo, Assistimulated, and Nunkworn, Assistimulated. I do also, of course, have Rasmus, uh, no, not, what's his name? Uh, crap, was it Rasmus? I almost said Rasmus Darini, and that sounds more like, I don't know, I, I have the, uh, I have the Overworld guy, I think it is Rasmus. I, I, I have the Overworld guy, Assistimulated as well, but he's a rare. So there's not, I don't really put non-hollows in here uh, too much, uh, but I do have them in my hollow thing. I am tempted to go and like put them in here just so that I can be like, oh yeah, I got all four assimilated right here. <laughs> uh, out of all of them, I think easily Colmo Assimilated is the best one. Non-Corn Assimilated is pretty cool. I really wish they would have started expanding the Fluid Morph idea with other tribes, but I guess that's one of the things that makes Morellians really unique. Uh, so the fact that uh, the Danians do have a fluid morpher, but he's got heavy restrictions on him is really interesting as well. <coughs> Sorry if I cough every now and then, guys. I have allergies and it is bad. Over here, I got two Cridolin, uh, one Supremium promo. I try to keep them separate because they it just looks so ugly, so I keep them separate. Uh, although I am tempted to put it underneath the other one so I don't have to look at it anymore. I got a, oh god, I can't read his name, uh, Vilric Lan, oh god, 
Landfair. There we go. Thug Rand Landfair. Pretty cool card. Target elemental attack does. Uh, wait, what? All damage? Oh, loses all abilities. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, let's see here. Got the last of the Danian uh, Hollows, uh, Orbane, Mivendal, and Draz. Out of all these three here, I really want to find a way to play Mivendal. I really like his Brain Wars effect. We contribute him and just bring back a. Uh, uh, Chieftain, which is really really cool. Uh, then I also got a I got a bunch of Myrants. Just overall, also a pretty interesting card. Uh, again, Danians as a as a deck type it, that I really haven't messed around with too much. I, I suck at them, and what I usually end up just doing with them is playing them like they're overworlders with just all the elements and crap. Uh, if you guys want me to try and tackle Danians, which by the way, uh, I'm gonna be 100% honest. I don't really know what to do for this channel's videos for the future other than more deck profiles and discussions and stuff. I ultimately want to, I got some I, I got some things cooking in the oven so to speak uh, with uh, another YouTuber and I have uh, something interesting that's going to be resolving uh, a little dispute from about a year ago now. Uh, hopefully coming soon. Uh, we got to work out a time to talk and stuff. Uh, but I do want to hear you guys' ideas, recommendations, and such for doing videos and deck profiles and stuff. And if you guys want me to try tackling Danians, I, I am willing to. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Next up, we get into the Mipedians. Uh, I got my Blazitans. Uh, this is actually a gift from Norval Steven as well. Uh, this is my one that I bought. I never actually owned a Blazitan as a kid, and it drove me nuts. And then whenever I started getting back into collecting chaotic cards, the first thing I did was search Blazitan on Amazon, found a Max Energy one on Amazon, and bought it for like two bucks. Because <laughs> it's the premium pack one. And he's also got almost max, uh, I think he does, yeah, he has max courage and max speed. So the fact that uh, Norval gave me one that was max courage and max speed and max energy, basically just matching it, uh, I think I gave him something in exchange. I can't remember. It, it, it might have been a trade or he might have just given it to me. I can't remember. It's been like a year or two since he gave, since I got that from him. Down here, we get into some other interesting stuff. Got Kilron, another war beast I never had as a kid. I, again, I had crap for a lot of guys as a kid. I could not pull uh, the good war beasts for the life of me. So if I want to play war beasts, I had to play the okay ones and kind of just work off the best of their abilities. Speaking of Uberon, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we got my pride and joy, Prince Mudinu, Champion of the Guard. Oh my god, I am so happy I got this card. I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of him. I've gotten some insane offers for him from people asking to buy him off of me. I am never getting rid of it, probably, unless I get like an absolutely ridiculous uh, offer. And even then, I would have to like really weigh it, because getting a hold of this card drove me nuts. And I don't think I'll ever get a chance to own another one. You know, you, you guys might have noticed I sold off my Lord Von Blute, Servant of Ayn. I'm not too concerned of trying to get another one of him, because he does pop up on eBay a lot. This guy does not, okay? Same thing with Zemmel. Uh, that pops up on eBay quite a bit. This guy does not. <laughs> There's just not enough of him going around. So I ain't, uh, um, unless I get offered a ridiculous price, I don't think I'm ever getting rid of him. And even if somebody offers something crazy, I would have to heavily, heavily consider it. And I just absolutely love this card. He, he, he is, he is my treasure. <laughs> uh, now, right next to him, we got Como, uh, the only really good uh, Mepedian with invisibility disarm. There is another one that's Ribian, and Ribian's big downfall is that he has crap for health. So, <laughs> uh, let's see here. I got to widen. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see here. We got Setmech. I think they were kind of gearing up with the fire and earth thing for uh, dragons in this next set. You know, I, I really honestly think that all dragons or most of them would have had like fire and then some would probably have air or earth. That way, said that they weren't completely useless for old uh, Mepedi Index, but I think that they were really gearing up for that fire uh, aspect of uh, Mepedians uh, for the dragons coming up in fire and stone, but unfortunately we'll never know. <laughs> uh, then we got Epitrine. This guy's pretty interesting. He basically redirects all damage to him, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we got a 
Malif, this thing is really good for invisibility focused uh, Mepedian decks. Got Eterio, I hate this card, I've pulled way too many of them, and he's just kind of okay. Uh, the biggest thing with him is, well, yes, his sacrifice to prevent damage effect is pretty cool. Uh, the fact that, like, he either Mepedians don't have very consistent ways of bringing monsters back, there isn't really much of a reason to play him, I think. Got Vivarf, the absolute objective worst super rare ever made in any card game whatsoever. I hate this card. He's the reason I don't buy Silent Sands anymore, despite the fact that I love Silent Sands. Silent Sands is my favorite uh, set, like, full stop. It's my favorite set. Uh, it was a set that I first bought whenever I got back into this game, or it might have been... Uh, actually, yeah, I bought it along with Xeno for the Hive, so technically they were both my first, but I remember opening Silent Sands first. <laughs> and... I, I absolutely love the set. It introduced War Beast and it introduced me to the awesomeness of Mepedians and everything. And it also introduced me to how rarity does not make a card good. <laughs> and Fivvarv is the epitome of that. I hate this card. I pull him every time I buy Silent Sands. Every time I buy Silent Sands, especially in bulk, I always pull at least one and it drives me nuts. Sometimes I pull multiple and ah, uh, that just it really grinds my gears. Uh, then we got Rivian, the other somewhat okay, I mean, just play uh, freaking Kalmo if you're going to go with uh, uh, an Invisibility Disarm card. Because, well, yes, he does have Air 5, and uh, when a creature deals damage to itself, the damage is increased by 5, so he basically punishes recklessnesses and stuff. He's, he, his health, <laughs> it's crap. He's going to die in like one hit. Two hits, maybe, if he's lucky. And then we got uh, Tafiol, the Catacomb, or sorry, Kofika Hunter. He's a cool, interesting card. I don't think he's particularly great, but he's interesting at the least. Rasma Darini, one of my favorite cards uh, that I had a lot of as a kid because he was, again, a 10 promo, and he was a really good 10 promo. Uh, basically, if I could get my hands on a really good card easily, I would abuse the heck out of it. Uh, then we got Prince Medinu, uh, the original. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the original Prince Medinu. I know there's a, I remember seeing an interesting combo uh, where Prince Medinu and I think, yeah, I think you can do it with, no, 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 you can only do it with Prince Medinu because he doesn't have any stats. But if I remember right, there's a really intricate combo to where you, with one attack, you can do the most amount of damage in one attack with the original Prince Medinu. It requires like a five card setup and you need to have exactly everything you need. And it just results in like, I think a hundred and no, it, it results in a stupid high number of damage. I can't remember. Uh, if somebody knows the combo I'm talking about, please Please put it in the comments below because I remember seeing it on like the forums once and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> Over here, we got the last of my Mopedians. We got uh, Bivike. I really want to like this card, but he's only really good if you're going against Marillions and there's no side decking in Chaotic, so you can't really use them effectively, I think. Uh, then we got the Marillions, my, my, my favorite tribe. <laughs> Uh, Ayn, the, uh, Ogolark, Oligarch, good lord, I can't wait till I get around to doing lore videos so I can talk about the Marillions, because, oh, I love Lovecraft, and I love the idea of these cards and everything, and just how cool they are, I love their designs, I could gush about the Marillions for hours, and I, I probably will eventually, uh, we got, uh, Ayn, the Oligarch, uh, Abenabaku, I've always, I always wanted this card as a kid, never could pull him, same thing with, uh, freaking Raftab down here, I think, one of my favorite things about the, uh, Marillions is that their effects are either really utilitarian, really annoying, or they are just really, really cool and interesting. Like, heck, freaking Abenabaku, if, uh, if your engaged creature has more Mija counters than the opposing engaged creature, your opponent must play attack cards at random. <laughs> like, how hilarious is that? I love it. It, it really, it really, uh, just kind of drives home the fact that they were uh, supposed to really mess with people. And I kind of wish they would have kept with that idea. And But at the same time, I really liked the direction they took it too. So it's, it's I love them. I could talk about them forever. So uh, we got a... Uh, 
Cerulean, uh, the Song Thief, really, really, really good card. Absolutely love his artwork too. It's just really, really cool. Uh, apparently, according to the lore, he's like an outcast who was just kind of uh, like, apparently that even the Marillions were like, hey, you're way too crazy. You're, you are going that way. <laughs> and the only reason why he was accepted back into Marillion society is because they kind of need him to counter the uh, musicians, uh, which I think is just kind of really cool. And I got the Nunkhorn all art. I really am not a fan of his standard art. It just doesn't look good to me. But I really do love this uh, action shot of him on the all art. Just looks super cool. Uh, then we got Raftab. One of my favorite Marillions in general. I really like his design. He's super cool looking. Uh, he's got an interesting effect and such. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of his upgraded version, but I do really like both in general. Uh, heck, I actually like this card so much I need my RuneScape character after him. <laughs> Back as a kid, at least. Uh, it's my character still named after it, too, because I'm too lazy to change it. So, uh, and I don't even know what I would change it to, and it, it just, that little piece of history for me. So, down here we got Vixpin. He's basically the uh, cheaper Cerulean. He does almost the same thing in terms of negating music. But he basically gets rid of all of his music counters and such. It's not as good, but if you don't have the money for a Cerulean and you still want a really good negator, uh, you can't go wrong with Fixed Spin. Uh, and on the bright side, you get the better artwork of the two, <laughs> in my opinion. I really like Fixed Spin's design. He looks so cool. Uh, we got Aval Parr. He's just kind of interesting. Uh, Raft Head Mind Scryer. Again, not the biggest fan of him. Uh, I'm the bigger fan of uh, Raft Tab himself. Uh, then we got Ritsu Dag, one of my favorite cards to play in Marillion decks. He was my first Marillion that I pulled. Uh, I, I could not pull Marillions for the life of me. E even the freaking, what was he, Uncommon uh, Zistork, who is actually like a really good Marillion Chieftain for just a, a general Marillion Chieftain deck. Uh, and I finally pulled one and it was Ritsu Dag, and I was like, oh hell yeah! And Ritsu Dag, he's a, such a cool card. He pumps up your creature's lowest uh, um, discipline stat at the beginning of combat, and he just makes it a whole lot easier to win stat checks and stuff like that. Really, really awesome card overall. Uh, wish the stats were a bit better, but also I really love that design. He's so cool. And when he showed up in the show, just for even for like the five seconds he was in there, it was so cool. Uh, then we got Flagamp, a really, really interesting card for uh, different decks and everything. He's a really cool uh, fluid morpher. Then I got Million, uh, Foothold Commander. I believe I do have the other Foothold Commanders, but they're all, uh, you know, not super or, uh, you know, hollow. <sighs> Sorry guys, it's so early in the morning. Hmm. Moving on down, we got uh, my other pride and joy, my two Ursuses. One is heavily damaged, I got it from a friend, and the other I pulled out of the pack, of course. Uh, I would love to continue doing the search for Ursus, but unfortunately, it seems as though uh, the Alliance's Unraveled starter decks seem to have pretty much dried up. I can't find them anywhere. <laughs> uh, and besides, it's more so Chromax I need. I only got one Chromax, I need another one. Uh, love them. <laughs> uh, moving on down, we got uh, Proboscar. He's just kind of there. And then we got Smilden. I love Smilden. He's so cool. I remember the episodes he was in the uh, series was just really, really awesome. It's such a cool, interesting card. Uh, I think it's hilarious that they took Smilodon and literally just knocked out the O for his name. <laughs> I think it's just hilarious because that, that just really, that, that's grade A naming, guys. Uh, <laughs> he has a Smilodon, though. Uh, moving on to the attacks. I got all my Ganon. I always wanted this card as a kid, and then I finally just bought one, like, whenever I started collecting cards again. Uh, I got two Apocalypse. I have pulled way too many of that. It's kind of funny. Uh, one Mega Roar. Mega Roar is pretty cool. Not many... I, I can't... I mean, I, I haven't used it in many decks, so I can't really speak on its usability and such. Unified Unit, Unit Tribe Charge. I want to like this card, but... For the impact it does uh, have, it's not much. I wish it would have done something else too. Uh, more Fraff is pretty cool. Before the Storm is really nice for uh, initiative decks and stuff. Uh, Ice Claw, or say Winter Claw is pretty cool. Uh, Rancorous, uh, Rancorous Projection is just kind of okay. Uh, uh, Mandiblore Might. Eh, it's it's not good. <laughs> Moving on down. 
Blaze Barrage, I love that card. It's just really, really good for what it does. Uh, Discipline Destructions, interesting. Uh, Coral Balls. Oh god, does anybody remember trying to like find a, any card with balls in its name uh, on the freaking forums? Like, oh, let's say you wanted Coral Balls. Well, you couldn't ask on the forums, hey, does anybody have a Coral Balls or trade? Because if you did, balls would get censored. It was hilarious. So what people had to do was like get around the naming conventions of that and like put like periods in between or use number. It was hilarious always seeing what weird ways people would find to get around the censorship on the forums for it. Uh, moving on down, we got Infight. This was actually my first ever holo, and I got it out of my first ever pack of Xeno for the Hive. As I said, I got, I think, uh, one pack of Xeno for the Hive, and I think one or two packs of, uh, Silent, no, 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 I remember now. I popped, I bought one Silent Sands, one Xeno for the Hive, and I think one Dawn of Param to get me going, because I had this, the trial decks on, uh, online, and I didn't pull particularly anything out of any of them, but Infight was my first uh, holo I pulled. I pulled it out of that scene for the Hive pack, and I remember the first card I pulled because I, oh wait, was that? No, I don't know. I, def <laughs> I can't remember, it was so long ago. <laughs> but I do remember pulling this in my first uh, scene of the Hive pack. Uh, it's not a good super. I thought it was when I first saw it. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Four, four build points, 20 damage, that's a lot. It's gonna win me a bunch of games. Then I tried it and it was garbage. Because 20 damage with one attack, taking up a bunch of spaces, it was just not good. And uh, yeah, and it's really only particularly good in a Danian mirror match. Uh, United uh, War Stance is a pretty good card for, uh, it's about anything for Earth and Air. <laughs> uh, Minor Roar is pretty cool. Uh, Magma Hack, I like it. Uh, Electric Rain, Purifying Mud. I honestly don't have much to say about attacks and stuff, so I'm just gonna kind of breeze on through. Uh, oh, here's one I do have some to say about. One of my favorite attacks to use, Super Cooled Rain. Oh, God. As a guy who plays Marillions a lot, whenever I pulled this card back in the day, this thing won me games so much. <laughs> Even for the crap I had as a kid, this was like the most like particularly good attack I had as a kid. Such a cool card in general. 15 damage, 25 water, really cool artwork, and your opponent must get rid of four of their major counters. It's so annoying. Uh, Elemental Oxidation, uh, Poison Panic, moving on down, Ferocity. I actually have two Ferocity, uh, and what's always confused me about this card is look at the following on one of them. They're both super rares, okay? This has foiling. Let's see if I can hit it there. Yeah, you can see the foiling. Look at this foiling. It's like crazy. What's up with that? I don't get it. Somebody explain. <laughs> uh, I, I remember pulling these from PAX as a kid, uh, or I can't remember what I got them from, but I do remember getting them as a kid, and I've always been confused by that. Uh, Slash Claw and Cyclone Slam, as a, a, as a uh, War Beast fan, I love these cards. They're such good cards. I love them. I can't say much more about it. Uh, next up, we got Bodle's Elemental Converter. Uh, funnily enough, according to TCO, this was never printed, but as far as I can tell, it was printed. Uh, like, it never had like a physical version, but it, it apparently does. Um, then I have uh, one uh, Zerium Armor. I actually... So this card is worth a lot, but I got it for 20 bucks. <laughs> there was a dude on eBay, he was selling this along with like two other cards that were both ultra rares. And uh, it was all for like 20 bucks in total. And I'm like, insta buy. <laughs> I got it for dirt cheap and I love it. Uh, then we got Hammer Doom, the, the Doom Hammer. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some people saying, oh, well, you can't call it that anymore because then you might get yelled at by Blizzard because of the Doom Fist. Well, the Doom Hammer is cooler, just to say. Um, and yeah, I have one of the standard ones from, uh, uh, God, what was that? Silent Sands, and I have one of the premium pack ones, so not much more to say about it than that. Over here, I have one of the cover rail shards of the Tidal Crest. Really cool card. Can't be really used super often, but I do like it. Uh, Chowler is pretty cool, uh, Von Blute's Sickle is a really obnoxious equip card, uh, I almost said equip spell, I had to like stop myself for a second. <laughs> uh, Danian Carapars, I remember using this card a lot as a kid, because this thing would just destroy Battle Gear a lot. Basically, 
If the creature it's equipped to is destroyed, it jumps onto the monster that it was battling, destroys their battle gear, and replaces it. And if there, and also makes it infected with, uh, you know, the infector token thingy. So it's really, really funny with what this thing can do, and it can just dot decimate the an entire team's uh, um, uh, battle gear lineup <laughs> if it doesn't get destroyed. Uh, War Beast Power Release is a pretty cool card. Phobia Plates I really like. Uh, Giga Trooper is also pretty cool. I think that was actually in the Z Zerum Armor uh, deal. Uh, Brain Amplifier is also pretty interesting. Uh, Mepedian Fogarite, I really want to find a way to use this in a deck that doesn't involve Barakaton, especially since I sold my Barakaton or traded it. I can't remember how or what, but oh well. Uh, moving on, I got my Mujic. I got uh, the Underworld Song Revival and Overworld at Refrain of Denial. Uh, Fighters Fanfare, all three really good ultras in general here. Uh, got, I love this, I love this name. March of the Marillion Minions. Or wait, no, that's not it. Okay, never mind. Uh, oh yeah, Intimidating Melody of Mar, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's just so cool. I just love the namings on these. So, got March of the Marillion Minions, which I do think is a cool name. Uh, Song of Stasis Shield, pretty interesting. Ostinato of Oban Mir, I love it. Just the naming, I love like especially freaking like the Marillion music. It's so cool in terms of the names. Uh, Elemental er 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 Elegy, pretty er interesting. Dania music. Calling of Ayn, obviously supposed to be referencing Calling of Cthulhu. Really good card. Well, it, it does what it's supposed to do: flip over Ayn and win your game. <laughs> Let's be honest. I can't really say it's a really good card when it literally is just a good card that flips over Ayn and wins you the game, basically. Uh, Opus. Uh, oh God, I can't read that. Opposed, Opus Opposed, pretty interesting, excuse me, yawning, need coffee, okay, <clears throat> uh, Fluid Morphers Fanfare, uh, pretty fun card there, I love it, <laughs> uh, Forgotten Origins, really obnoxious card that just gets rid of everything in the graveyards, love it, uh, Sound of, uh, Sound of, what? Noise? Sound, sound of noise. Yeah, sound of noise. This card is really good for being just a general disruptor. Obviously, it's not as good as the uh, one where it's just like a one cost that bounces the music card back to the hand. But this does just flat out negate a music, and I love it. It was all I had to negate music for the longest time, too, until I got the uh, one that negates that's like a rare. Uh, let's see here. I got uh, him of Teleportation. I don't really particularly care for its effect, but I do love that artwork. It just looks so cool. It looks like a black hole. And then we got, uh, got Coral of the Apparition. Coral of the Apparition. Pretty interesting. I actually have no idea what this card does. I haven't read it in forever, and I cannot read it upside down. Uh, and then we got Symphonic Pel Pelagy. Okay, got it. Symphonic Pelagic Mare Song. <laughs> Again, the names on the uh, Marillion stuff, I love it. Basically, it, this is literally just basically a Zamul in music form, and I, it's just so cool. Uh, moving on down, we got uh, Glacier Plains, Marillion Heat Cannon. Really good card. It's the only alternate win condition in the game, and it's not that hard to do, in all honesty. Uh, Stone Pillar, uh, another really good card. Uh, prototype Demolition Field. Love the artwork. Don't know what's going on, but I don't really particularly care for its effect. Uh, moving on, we got the Mepidim uh, Lounge, the Sci Finger Shelf. I always love it when there's a location for uh, the uh, deep sea that the Marillions live in because you get to see more of what their world looks like and you don't really get to see that too often, especially in the show. And the Sci Finger Shelf, and it will along with like the... Uh, it just looks so cool. I'm like, oh, I want to explore this place. It's kind of like, it, it, it reminds me of my love for Made in Abyss. It's like, you got this deep, dark, dangerous area, and I want to explore it. <laughs> uh, Foothold Assault Trance, really good card if you're playing a mono uh, tribe uh, deck. Uh, Lake Pokir, really annoying card. I, I, I want to play the Emerillions, but at the same time I don't because, hey, yeah, uh, all my Emerillions lose 10 energy, but at the same time, Ayn gets 20. <laughs> it 
It's like, why not? But uh, it seems like it'd make it easier to have Hein survive a fight so that he can, you know, be flipped over, but I digress. Uh, Nadrin's Castle, uh, Iron, uh, Rock River Canyon. I love Rock River Canyon's artwork. Like that's one of the that's one of the most noble uh, chaotic cards. That I really want to just blow up and put on my wall. <laughs> Dracon's Threshold. Oh, God, such an interesting location. I, it would blew my mind when such a throwaway, interesting location was just suddenly throttled into being like one of the main plot points for one of the later seasons. Uh, open Doors of the Deep Mines, uh, not much more to say about it other than it's a pretty neat card. Uh, Prexor Chasm, uh, really interesting. I actually used to have Prexor Chasm uh, with the Blight going on, but I don't have it anymore. I thought I kept it, but oh well. Uh, let's see here, Still Charles Mine, another, uh, uh, god what is it called, Fire and Stone card that I don't know where to put. <laughs> Directing Threshold Portal to the Past. Uh, the Golden Heptagon, I'm just gonna, gonna breeze through because this is running on for god knows how long. The Magma Dam, Rapasa, Glacier Plains, uh, Gambier's Hut. Now we get into the Battle Gear. Oh wait, what? I thought I did a battle. Oh, okay, yeah. This is just stuff over stuff because I have like 60 of these guys and I don't know what to do with them. Uh, so all that's left in this binder because that's really the end of my chaotic stuff is I have these really cool My Hero Academia cards here. I just absolutely love these. I can't read Japanese, uh, but it's really, really cool. A friend of mine sent these to me uh, after seeing that, hey, I gave My Hero Academia Season 1 like a 10 out of 10 on my anime list. I, I, I'll be honest, I have not watched past Season 1 yet. I really want to, but I just haven't had the time. Uh, this summer, I do plan on catching up, or at least trying to, and I do, I have kept up with current events in the show, but I actually haven't watched it. Uh, then we got some Force of Will cards over here, that's nah, screw it, might as well show you guys my, the rest of my collection. Force of Will is a really interesting card game, it just isn't, unfortunately, alive in my area. It's dead in my area completely and totally. I want to play it again, but it, especially since it was a fun game. It's basically a different take on magic and stuff. It like, combines concepts of magic, the gathering, and with Yu-Gi-Oh! and makes a really interesting card game. Uh, then I got some of my Pokemon cards from when I was a kid. I have no idea if any of these are like any worth or anything, but it's still interesting. I have no idea. If anybody knows if these are worth anything, I would gladly sell them. <laughs> uh, I do also have a crap ton of other Pokemon cards that I just have not put in here yet. Uh, over here, got some old Digimon cards. Got my uh, Kill a Kill promo for Weiss Swartz that I got for getting one of the Blu ray bundles. Uh, it, it's a. Uh, uh, Weiss Swartz is a game. It exists. It is basically just there to promote waifus. That's all. <laughs> that's all I care about. Uh, that's all people probably care about. Uh, and that's the only reason why the game is still around, honestly. It doesn't play very well from what I remember. Uh, then we got some uh, other chaotic cards I found uh, while going through some stuff, uh, and I, I'm too lazy to reshuffle everything in here. Got some Digimon cards from the la last version of the card game, as far as I know. Uh, if you guys follow me on my main channel, you guys probably already saw the uh, opening of these. It's really interesting. I have no idea how to play po uh, Digimon, but it does uh, strike up my interest. Then we got some, oh God, I wish this did well, Kaijudo, okay, so I loved the Duel Masters as a kid, and it was so cool, I really want to watch the show again, and when they brought it back as Kaijudo, I was all game for it, I was trying so hard to get my friends and the guys up at Locals to play it, and support it, and love it, it's so cool, I love it, I really wish this would have done more, but no freaking Wizards of the Coast does not know how to properly run a card game other than freaking uh, Magic Gathering, and even then there's a debate on whether or not they're running that to the ground. Ugh. So... <laughs> No ban list, no set rotation. How long do you think you can go without either one of those in a game? <laughs> uh, and then also they had poorly designed cards, you know. They, they had no restrictions on anything and they just kept releasing easier and easier ways to churn out super big monsters and auto win games. It, it got ridiculous and it, it, it didn't catch on at my locals for a reason. Uh, now granted, I, I, do, I love these cards, and heck, I probably am going to use them as tokens and stuff 
for Yu-Gi-Oh and everything. Uh, maybe not Queen Kalima because she was actually expensive when I pulled her. It was in like the last days of the game before they officially canceled it and she was like 25 bucks. I don't know if she is still or not, but it, it's still interesting. Oh god, I miss this card game. I want Duel Masters to do well here. Why is it still going on in Japan but failing here every time they try to do it? Uh, we got more uh, Duel Masters cards over here. These guys are promos. God, it's been 2012. Uh, it's like Aikido cards, gotta separate it. Uh, we got some wonderful, more forcible cards. I'll be 100% honest, as you guys, as I mentioned before, I love Lovecraft, and what got me into trying forcible was the Lovecraft uh, deck. Uh, just so cool. I actually have a full Lovecraft deck still built. Yeah, it's. I'm sure it's been thrown out of rotation, but I still love that uh, deck to heart. Well, to my heart, well, I still love it, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Uh, I got some more stuff. Some more stuff. I love it how they. I really wish Bullshock Dragon got a promo version in, or like a hollow version in Kaijudo because, hey, he was the main character's boss monster in the original TV show. Why would you not give it any recognition? <laughs> more Digimon cards because I ran out of space. Uh, more Chaotic cards because I ran out of space. And then I thought, yeah, here we go. Here's my old school Duel Master cards from when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, most of these are at least. I do have some that I did pick up uh, earlier uh, when I bought a structure deck. And then, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, guys, that's my collection of Chaotic plus some other card games. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, I, I've seen some other people's collections that they share on Discord and stuff, and mine honestly doesn't look as nearly as good as some people's. Like, holy crap, Hikeda shared his on Discord a while ago, and he has like four of every card. <laughs> it, it's crazy. So, yeah. Uh, I would really like to try and uh, a friend of mine once asked me if I would try and collect every chaotic card in existence or one of every card at least. I would love to do that, you know, have a full collection, but considering the price of some of these cards, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that also required me hunting down a draw skin. And I actually like had a mini heart attack yesterday morning. I, I saw on, on eBay, <gasps> draw skin! Because uh, I, I, I have it set up to where I get a notification anytime that uh, somebody puts a draw skin on eBay. And I'm like, oh, there's a new draw skin on eBay. I'm going to see how much it's selling for, just out of curiosity. And I saw it for 20 bucks by now. I'm like, <gasps> I click on it and then like the full title shows up and it says fake proxy draw skin. I'm like, no, <laughs> why are you selling that for 20 bucks? Why do you play my heart like that? So yeah, <laughs> uh, but what do you guys think of this uh, video? Thank you for watching. If you guys have any ideas, recognitions or anything else for future content from this channel, I am going to be toying around with some new ideas and stuff and not just constantly throw out deck profiles for you guys. God, trying to talk through a yawn like that was not fun. So, what do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Have a great day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And see you all later. Peace out. Goodbye.